Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Blue Fly. If this is your first time visiting, welcome and I invite you to subscribe to my channel. It is as simple as pressing that subscribe button, tapping that bell and making sure to select all to receive all of my future postings. Today I will be sharing a couple of things. I will be completing my garden my stone garden right here off of the back patio i do have a previous video it's called a stone patio makeover if you have not viewed that go on over and watch it because you'll see where this garden actually comes into play with the back patio and you'll see some fabulous back patio decorating so up front I have planted some vincas actually a few weeks ago, some white vincas, and they are sun lovers, summer lovers, as well as some creeping jenny that is coming out over the stone and will give that perfect cascading look coming down. I'm going to be sharing a fabulous furniture haul. And well, that being said, let's begin, shall we? It is a breezy, fabulous morning here in Northern Virginia, and we're working on the back side of my sunroom, right here in this stone garden. I'm going to be actually making this a topiary garden. And here we go, let's get started. I have two double ball topiaries that um, these were actually, I don't have a link, I'm sorry everyone, but these were purchased from a nursery in California. And when, whenever I do topiaries out in the garden, I love working with a nice, solid uh, topiary base form. We went to our local nursery, Maryfield Nursery, and picked up some needlepoint ivy. Now, normally when I put together a topiary, I use a much larger cell than this, but this is all they had. It's, it's pretty slim pickings at the nursery this year, and um, we hope, they hope that um, that changes next year. Down here at the bottom, I planted five ivy cells. And as it grows, I will just continue to wrap it around the topiary ball. Now, normally it would already be halfway up, but you know, we have to take what we can get and I'm absolutely fine with this. So I have all my cells placed in both of the forms and it's going to take a little time, but at least I have all of you to take along with me to and watching it grow and watching them grow into beautiful topiaries. But I'm going to add a few things right here in the middle so we can have uh, some enjoyment for right now. I placed in, for those of you that do not already know, the hydrangea is my most favorite, favorite floral. So I placed in some hydrangea with my angel, because I think all of us love angels in our gardens. 
Now, when I work with hydrangeas, I like to use the plants that have the deep wine colored stem because to me, it just gives me that perfect hydrangea blossom that I'm looking for. Now we're going to add in my mother's favorite flower, the phlox. This is the Gina, and she is a summer lover, full sun, which is perfect because this receives sun all day long. It's also a perennial. So now that we have our home, we're settled, perennials are huge because I don't want to keep having to write that new check or swipe the card or, you know, to perennials come back every year. And as you can see, these are irresistible to butterflies. And all of us love butterflies out in the garden. I'm also having to learn the zone here. This zone is completely different than California. So the flocks were placed in the back on the left and right hand side of the hydrangeas. So to me, it was kind of perfect because it's like the phlox, mama's flower, is hugging the hydrangeas, my flower. And as they grow up, they are, the phlox, is, they're just going to mingle through the hydrangeas and come out and just greet us with all of their beautiful, beautiful floral. So as you can see in my planters, I have quite a bit of Creeping Jenny. I have some white geraniums added in here with a little piece of, of wood. Again, the white Vincas up front. And the Garden Angel. I love this space. Okay, here we go. I'm keeping it a little bit real right here. I, guys, <laughs> my home is a wreck, a complete wreck. It's like we moved in. Look, I still have a sheet on my window, but that's fine. I'll be explaining about that later. But we're going to be working on the whole backside of my bedroom today while we'll be sharing my furniture. And we're going to be starting with this fabulous piece right here. I absolutely love this armoire. It has the perfect amount of distressing to it. Now, during the move, it did get some, um, you know, those unwanted white markings that like to get on our furniture during moves, and that's perfectly fine. I use that dry erase pad. Um, I believe it's by Mr. Clean, and it just takes those unwanted marks right off. Now, many of you, I'm going to share a little story with you, um, know about my mother. But for those of you that do not, um, Mama was German and has a very, very strong accent. But not like us children really notice it like our friends. They would always tell us, well, they'd tell me, Bev, I just, I can't understand your mom. And I would be like, what are you talking about? Well, when Mama and I saw this piece, she goes, Oh, Bevy, you must buy this piece. It will be absolutely perfect for your home. So, as you can see, I listened to Mama and purchased the piece. 
And this curtain right here used to be Mama's sheet on her bed. So now as I twist it and place it up every morning to let the sun in, I can think of my sweet mama as well. Now we're gonna work on down the wall in front of my little sweet window that brings in a big, fabulous breeze. I wanted to take you in through the window, pay no attention. I tell you, video is something else. It shows it all. Ignore that dirt <laughs> under the bottom part of the window. I can hear my mother in my ear right now that I will be cleaning that. But anyhow, <laughs> look at the beautiful floral that comes through our window to greet us. It is a wonderful, I believe this is going to be my favorite spot. And right underneath, I placed this sweet little vintage French country table. I actually purchased it from, um, it was in Modesto, California, and it has some French sten stenciling on it. I used to know what it said, but you know, I have obviously forgotten. So those of you that might know, I'm sure all of us would love it if you could share in the comment box what this is actually saying. It has a, a poly top to it, which it needs a new coat for sure. And then down here at the bottom, my signature black with all the distressed goodness. And you'll see those unwanted markings on it through the move, and that's okay. Dry erase is gonna take it off. And basically, when you go the distressed look, it's it's like a no fuss. Um, what I mean by that is if you get like a ding on it or, or a, a mark that has been rubbed off, it just brings character. As you can see, I placed the table, I mean the chair up on top of the table because I wanted to give you guys um, a, bet a better view than I could give you it being down on the floor. Again, we have all the distressed goodness with a highly decorated ladder back. Very solid, very sturdy chairs. And they placed leather on the cushions, which I will be speaking about here in a moment. <laughs> Up front, you can see there's a little bit more distressing on the legs because of the rubbing of the move. And that's what I'm talking about. It just gave it so much more character. I don't look at this and go, oh my gosh, I have to repaint this. This is just a mess. No, it's given it character. A story, right? A story about the move from California. And the table has two chairs, one for me and one for hubby. And then on top of the table, there is, well, it's basically, it's a napkin is what it is. And I'm gonna give her a nice good pressing and I just have one. And the reason I just have one is because the other is packed somewhere, I don't know where, in our mountain of boxes. I'm telling you, it, it it's like we moved in for a second time. It is a mess. So I'm gonna place this on top of the chair because, okay, I love, love, love leather okay I, I love the look of it i love the feel of it um when my hand goes across it but when my legs when i'm sitting down in shorts when my legs touch it and it gets that stickiness um all i can say is no okay no um there's nothing comfortable or enjoyable about that 
but there's everything enjoyable in placing a fabulous large napkin on top of a chair. And it goes perfectly with the armoire. Now I'm not gonna share many accessories in this video. Actually, there's just this one. And this lamp was a Facebook marketplace find. It is an antique lamp um, that just has the most beautiful golden scroll work all over it. Now this, before I started YouTube, I actually painted this. I gave it a good gold painting um, and then added in some antiquing wax to give it this nice aged look. But look underneath the shade, the, all the blues, the turquoise and the plums and the butterscotch and creams just all blending with one another. It's a beautiful swirl of color. And when I turn on this lamp, it all illuminates through this beautiful scroll work. And to think I almost sold this lamp. I'm, I, I just obviously wasn't thinking right, right? The next piece is this French country. It can be used as a buffet. It could be used as a dresser. Um, and as you can see, it has definitely seen better days. It's been sitting in storage for four years. Now I've already refinished the top again, and I'm gonna show you the bottom in a moment. But I wanna point out how this table and the dresser work so well with one another. And by no means were these pieces purchased together. They were completely separate finds. So what I'm trying to point out here is you don't always have to go out and just go buy that bedroom suite at once. It's all about the adventure, right? The journey and finding all these beautiful pieces that um, will just work perfectly with one another. Now I'm gonna show a little demonstration with using some Annie Sloan clear wax. This product right here is, it's just amazing. That's all I can say, absolutely amazing. And I'm using a round, I will be using a round brush. As you can see, I'm just going in circles with the wax. I mean, it truly is just this simple. You just put your brush in your wax, get a good amount on there, and you just go in a circular motion all over um, the, the area that you desire for it to be on. And the more wax that you place on, the darker it will become. Now I'm not quite sure if I'm gonna have to go over this piece with a second coat. So you put on a coat and then you make sure to wipe off all of your excess wax. And what I use is this blue cloth and it's like a towel and they can be purchased from Lowe's or Home Depot, even Walmart, I believe, um, sells these. And you just wipe off again all the excess wax. And then if you feel the need, you know, that you want it to look um, a little more uh, rich, then you just add on a second coat and do the same thing. Wipe off the additional wax between each application. It is so simple. I, you could even hand a brush over to a two-year-old and they would have so much fun. There is just um, no right and wrong way. It's just as simple as applying it on to your piece that you're working with. So now I'm gonna continue 
the other side and the bottom portion as well. And here we have it, the finished piece. I'm so pleased and very, very excited over here. And again, I wanna share with you all these pieces, the table, the buffet, and even the arm wall, how they all work so well with one another and they were purchased all at different times. So in the back corner, that's where I gave it the most height with the arm wall. And then the other furniture pieces are, you know, at a much lower level and they just go right across the rest of the back wall. You must stay tuned. I have so much decorating coming ahead. So many things have been taken off of the truck and we are so excited to share all of this with you um, very very soon i am having a full bedroom haul um, a decorating marathon i'm sorry i'm just waiting for one more item to come in all of you have a wonderful day